Good morning, learners and all viewers. Welcome once again uh, for today's mathematics lesson. My name is Eno Kasera. Today, I wish to take you through construction of quadrilaterals. Uh, now, last time, you were taken through construction of triangle and also construction of circle passing through the vertices and also the sides. Uh, today, I want us to continue from where the teacher stopped. Uh, that is construction of quadrilaterals. Well, before we start uh, doing that, make sure that you have a pencil with you, you have a rubber or an eraser, and also a sharp pencil. Uh, the other thing that uh, is very important before we continue with the construction is that uh, you need to be very accurate. Construction needs a lot of accuracy. And also, your work has to be neat. Now, starting with quadrilateral, uh, we'll first take you through um, what it means. Now, quadrilaterals, these are just four-sided figure. A quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. Quadrilateral is a four-sided figure a four-sided figure. Any figure that has got four sides is called a quadrilateral. Now, uh, the other unique thing about quadrilateral is that total angle or total interior angle, total interior angle, total interior angle, or angles add up to 360 degrees. This is very, very important, learners, because this, uh, this is something that sometimes is only said, whereby you are asked which of the following is true about quadrilateral. So the two properties that I've given about quadrilateral are the ones that the quadrilaterals that I'm going to discuss here share. So uh, all those figures must, be, must have four sides. At the same time, the total interior angles must add up to 360 degrees. Now, you will find that as we continue, uh, you will find that uh, there are other properties that are not shared by all quadrilaterals. So these two properties are the ones that are shared by all the quadrilaterals. I repeat, these two properties are the ones that are shared by all the quadrilaterals. That is, a quadrilateral must have four sides. At the same time, the total interior angles must also add up to 360 degrees. Now, some of the examples of quadrilaterals or quadrilaterals include, quadrilaterals include, uh, quadrilaterals include one square. So we have one square. Square is a quadrilateral. Uh, we'll discuss about the properties of each and every quadrilateral that I'm going to mention here. And then uh, the second one is a uh, rectangle. So rectangle is also another example of quadrilateral. We also have uh, rhombus, rhombus. And then number four, we have parallelogram, parallelogram. Parallelogram is the fourth one. So uh, then finally, we have trapezium, trapezium, trapezium. So these four, I mean these five quadrilaterals are the ones that I'm going to discuss. Now somebody might be asking uh, him or herself the reason as to why I've uh, decided to go through the properties of quadrilaterals. You cannot construct uh, these 
quadrilaterals if you don't understand their properties. And that is why I've decided to go through this with you so that you can be able to understand them and uh, see whether you can be able to construct um, uh, these five quadrilaterals. So very first, I will start with the square. I'll start with the square. Uh, now, square, square is a four-sided figure. Uh, let me just draw it here for you so that uh, uh, you can also be able to see how it looks. So a square is uh, a, an example of a quadrilateral, quadrilateral that has four sides, that has four sides. So the first, the first, uh, uh, now the first property, the first property of a, of a, a square, let me just, uh, let me just give you the properties first, then I'll draw it later on using the uh, compass and protractor so that I can be able to draw a uh, well-drawn diagram. Now, the first property of a square is that it, it, has, it, has four, it has four sides. Like I said earlier, these two properties of quadrilaterals are shared by all the four quadrilaterals, I mean five quadrilaterals I've written here. Uh, so the second property of a square is that um, each interior angle, each interior angle, each interior angle, each interior angle is nine is uh, a right angle. Each interior angle is a right angle. That is, uh, it's ninety degrees. Each interior angle is a right angle. The third property of a square is that it has, it has. Uh, it has two pairs, it has two pairs of parallel lines. It has two pairs of parallel lines. It has two uh, pairs of parallel lines. The fourth property of a square is that the diagonals are equal. The diagonals are equal. The diagonals are equal. Then the fifth one is that diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Diagonals bisect at right angle. Diagonals bisect at right angle. So that means that they bisect at 90 degrees. Well. The other, ex uh, the other property of a square is that opposite sides are parallel. Opposites, opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are parallel. Okay. So very fast, let me draw it for you here. So we can can just uh, can just have uh, maybe we draw square A B C D with sides with sides of uh, A B is four centimeters A B is four centimeters. So we start by drawing a line, straight line, straight line. Uh -huh. After drawing the straight line, then you measure four centimeters. You measure four centimeters from your ruler. You measure four centimeters. After measuring four centimeters, then you stand at any point on the line and draw an arc. Once, don't keep on repeating. Uh, come back here, draw the other arc, like that. And then uh, 
name that square as AB, name it AB. Now, you know very well that a square has got, uh, a square has got all sides equal, and uh, each angle is 90 degrees. So we can construct an angle of 90 degrees without using the protractor, or we can also uh, draw that uh, angle uh, when you use the protractor. So let me just use protractor here. So we measure 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is at this point. So you put a dot, put a dot. After putting the dot, also come this side, because uh, each, each interior angle is 90 degrees. Do the same with the angle there. And then after that, then we need to find the, the length of side BC. So you come again, you measure four centimeters. You measure four centimeters, four centimeters. And then you stand at point A, draw an arc above, draw an arc above, oh, sorry, above the dot. Uh, repeat the same while standing at B. Draw the arc above the dot, because the dot, the dot uh, gives you where the angle is. After that, then you join. You join up to where the arc is, having in mind where the dot is. So make sure that your line is passing through, is passing through the dot. Uh, like that. Then also come this side, do the same. Uh, make sure that uh, the line is passing through the dot. All right. Then from there, then we join this part here. Join this part. So join this. Like that. So if you look at uh, the figure that I've just drawn, you'll find that this A, B, C, D. So you'll find that this line A, D, line A, B, line B, C, and line C, D are all equal. So this is four centimeters, this is four centimeters, this is four centimeters. Now, then we say that it has four sides. As you can see, there are four sides. Each interior angle is right angle. So if you measure here, if you measure here, you're supposed to get 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. This is also 90 degrees. This is also 90 degrees. And this is also 90 degrees. Then after that, we have also said that it has two pair of parallel lines. So this line, line AB and line DC are parallel. Parallel lines are lines that uh, cannot meet. So even if you extend, they will still not meet. And then uh, we have said, so this is one pair. This and this is one pair. And then we also have line AD and BC which are also parallel. So that line, uh, that is line AD and line BC are also parallel to one another. And that's why here we have said it has two pair of parallel lines. Now, for your information, all quadrilaterals, uh, these five quadrilaterals that I've written here uh, have got uh, this, I mean, these four square, rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, they have two pair of parallel lines except trapezium that has got only one pair of, para, I mean, uh, uh, one pair of parallel line. So uh, we move to the next. We say diagonals are equal. Now, diagonals, we can join uh, line AC, join line AC, join line AC. 
and then uh, join line AC and also I want us to join I want us to join also line BD so you make sure that it passes through the points so uh, that is uh, diagonal line AC is the is one of the diagonals and also we also have uh, we also join line BD or these two points like that so these diagonals are equal these diagonals are equal if you measure if you measure uh, from here to here is 5.5 uh, and then here is also 5.5 so the diagonals are equal this diagonal is equal to this diagonal now the other thing we have said about square is that uh, the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. The diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. So then, if we, if we, if we measure this angle here, as you can see, if we measure that angle, you will see that it is 90 degrees. So that is why it is true to say that the diagonal bisect each other at 90 degrees. So all these uh, measures 90 degrees. All these measures 90 degrees. And then we have, we have also said that the opposite sides are parallel. Uh, opposite sides are parallel, as you can see. Line AB is parallel to line DC. So that is uh, exactly what a square is all about. Uh, one, I wish to take you through the next one, which is the rhombus. The next one, which is the rhombus. So, right here, rhombus. Properties of a rhombus. Properties of a rhombus. Now, the first property of a rhombus, uh, property, property of a rhombus. Property of a rhombus. Properties of a rhombus. Now, after discussing about properties of a rhombus, I want us to compare the two, that is square and the rhombus. Now, the first property of a rhombus, just like a square, rhombus has got, rhombus has four sides. Remember, I told you that these five quadrilaterals. Uh, one thing, or all quadrilateral, two things that uh, are always common is that they have four sides. At the same time, the interior angles add up to 360 degrees. So the first, the first property of a rhombus is that it has four sides. Number two about rhombus is that uh, opposite sides, opposite sides, opposite sides are opposite sides are equal are equal and parallel are equal and parallel opposite sides are equal and parallel then the third property of a rhombus is that diagonals diagonals are varied diagonals are varied uh, that means that diagonals are not equal so let me write here in brackets Diagonal are varied. That means that diagonals are not equal. But, but bisect, bisect at right angle. Diagonals are not equal, but bisect at right angle. The diagonals are not equal, but bisect at right angle. Now, uh, when we were talking about square, we said diagonals are equal. So this diagonal here, diagonal AC and diagonal DB are equal. But with the rhombus, the diagonals are not equal, but just like a square, diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. So that is a, a very important part that you need to understand. Now, after I will have drawn uh, the rhombus, you will be able to see uh, whether that is true. Um, number four, number four, uh, 
But the fourth property of a rhombus is that has has two pairs, two pairs of parallel lines. Has two pairs of parallel lines, just like uh, a square. And then the fifth uh, property of a rhombus is that opposite angles, opposite angles, opposite angles, opposite angles, opposite angles are equal. I will explain that after I will have drawn it. Then number six is that adjacent angles, adjacent angles, adjacent angles add up to adjacent angles add up to uh, 180 or we can also say adjacent angles are supplementary adjacent angles are supplementary now supplementary angles are supplementary supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees so if you if you add the adjacent angles then you'll be able to find out that they will add or they will sum up to 180 degrees. Okay, the next uh, property of a rhombus uh, is that all sides are equal. All sides are equal. All sides are equal. All sides are equal. Then the eighth one, uh, rhombus, 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 is a special rhombus is a special parallelogram rhombus is a special parallelogram but parallelogram cannot be a special rhombus so that is also another area that is always confusing rhombus is a special parallelogram but parallelogram is not a special rhombus in fact this four that is square Square rectangle, square rectangle rhombus are all special parallelograms. But the vice versa is not true. That is, it will be wrong if you say that parallelogram is a special rhombus. It will also be wrong to say uh, parallelogram is a special uh, rectangle. That is very, very wrong. So make sure that you understand that rhombus square rectangle are all special parallelogram the vice versa is not true that is parallelogram cannot be a special rhombus now having talked about the properties of a rhombus i want us to construct a rhombus here and then you can be able to find out whether those properties that i've just written are true so we'll start by drawing a line. Start by drawing a line here. Start by drawing a line. So the parallelogram that we are drawing um, is W, X, Y, Z. Uh, with psi W, X is three centimeters and then uh, we need to have one angle so angle w x y is can use 50 degrees so we start by drawing a line here start by drawing a line here straight one like the one i've drawn then after that we are constructing a rhombus W, X, Y, Z uh, with side W, X, 3 centimeter. Now, uh, remember we say that uh, a rhombus has got all sides being equal. So if line W, X is 3, that means that the other sides, the other three remaining sides are also 3 centimeters because uh, all the sides of a rhombus are equal. So we come here using the compass, then we measure three centimeters. So we measure three centimeters. Okay, so three centimeters. 
Okay, now that three centimeters, I stand at any point on the line. I draw an arc on that side. Come back here. I also draw the arc like that. Then after that, we name it. We name it X line WX. Line WX, three centimeters. After doing that, then we are told that angle WXY is 50 degrees. Angle WXY is 50 degrees. So normally, when we are finding out the angle, we look at the letter that is at the middle, the middle letter. In this case, the middle letter is X. And because on our line, we have uh, point X, so you put your protractor at that point. You put your protractor at that point. At X. Put your protractor at X. Uh -huh. Then, since the line is on this side, since the line is on this side, then we need to find the angle on this side. Remember your protractor has got uh, two scales. We have the inner scale and we have the outer scale. It is important that you use the correct scale. Now, the line will always guide you on which scale to use. Now, since our line was, is on this side, then we are supposed to look at the angle of the scale that is on this side. Now, the zero must start from this side where the line is. Now, in this case, we are going to use the outer scale. So we measure 50 degrees. So 50 degrees is here. So you put a dot, like I've just put mine. Then you remove your protractor. Then where the dot is does not mean that the line is going to end uh, there. What you need to do, again, is to measure the three centimeters. Remember I told you that um, one of the property of a rhombus is that all of its sides are equal. And since we were given one side, that is the side that we are going to use. So again, three centimeters. Uh -huh. Now, after measuring three centimeters, then you stand at x. The dot will guide you on where to put the arc. You don't just have to put arc anyhow. Where the dot is, you can put the arc above it or um, below it. It depends with where the dot is. Again, I say that the dot does not determine where the line will reach. Because I've seen sometimes learners, after putting the dot here, they think that the line will reach where the dot is. The line can be above the dot or below the dot. So put the arc above that dot, like that. You don't have to put it this side because the dot is here. The dot determines, of course, the dot we said, this is where the angle is. So it, be necessary. it will not be necessary if you draw the arc on that side. The dot will determine where the line will, will reach. Uh -huh. Then join that line, join that line, join that line. So I come here using a ruler. So I draw the arc, I mean the line, make sure that it passes through, it passes through the dot and also it reaches where the arc was. So this angle here is 50 degrees. That angle there is 50 degrees. So you indicate 50 degrees. Now, I hope you have seen a situation whereby uh, a figure has been drawn like this, and then you're asked to complete it. You have seen a situation whereby a figure has been drawn like this, and then you're asked to complete it. So what you need to do here is that the properties that we have discussed earlier are going to help you um, complete this, uh, uh, this figure here. So you can do that by using the sides. Now, since 
uh, all the sides of uh, rhombus are equal. So you stand at W, stand at W, then you put an arc like that. Then again, come back to, this should be W, X, Y. So again, you, you stand at, after putting an arc above W, like that, then again lift it, come at Y, again you do the arc like that. Where the two lines are intersected at is point Z. So this is Z. So now you can complete by joining line W, Z, can complete it by joining line W, Z. I said accuracy is key here. And don't keep on drawing the lines. Just do it once and be very accurate. Again, you come at this point, then you join the line. Your parallelogram, I mean your rhombus, is completely drawn. Now, we want to confirm the properties that I discussed earlier. Now, there is something here. I will start by four sides. So if you look at this, it has four sides, and the sides are equal. So this is three centimeters, this is three centimeters, and this is also three centimeters. Opposite sides are equal and parallel. So these opposite sides are equal and parallel. So I said parallel lines are lines that cannot meet and will never meet. So has two pairs. This and this makes one pair. This and this also makes a pair. And then we also uh, say that diagonals are varied, not equal, but bisect at right angle. So I want us to join, I want us to join line WY, line WY, uh -huh. line WY, and also line WZ, and also line WZ. So we join it like that. If you keenly observe this rhombus, it is evident that line ZX is longer than line WY. And that's why we said here that uh, opus, I mean uh, diagonals are varied. This diagonal and this diagonal are not equal. But we also say that they bisect at 90 degrees. So we can also find out that. Just take your protractor and then you measure. Take your protractor and then you measure. So you can say where the two arcs meet. You can name it O. Where the two diagonals meet, you can name it O. And then now we come here and measure. Come here and measure. Uh, if you look at this, it is evident again that uh, this is 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So learners and viewers, uh, all these properties that are written here, you can see that they are all true. Now the other part that uh, I want to mention is that adjacent angles add up to 180 degrees. So adjacent angles are these angles. So this one and this one must add up to uh, 180. Now if this is 50, this one should be 130. So that when you add this and this, you get 180. The other thing we talked about, we said the opposite angles, this angle here, angle ZWX and angle ZYX are equal. So this is also 130 degrees, this is also 130 degrees. Now opposite angles, this angle here and this angle here are opposite and equal. So that is simply the property of a rhombus. Uh, I want to take you through another quadrilateral. That is parallelogram. That is parallelogram. So parallelogram is another quadrilateral. 
one of the property of parallelogram is that it has it has four sides parallelogram so number one it has four sides has four sides has four sides mm -hmm. number two uh, opposite angles are equal opposite angles are equal number three um, adjacent angles adjacent angles adjacent angles add up to adjacent angles add up to 180 degrees number four has two pair as two pair of parallel lines as two pair of parallel lines number five number five is that uh, opposite opposite sides opposite sides are equal and parallel and parallel then number six number six is that diagonals are varied diagonals are varied diagonals are varied and do not bisect do not bisect at 90 degrees so learners and viewers uh, there's another important thing that you need to understand and this is this is a question that's so always common uh, but a square and a rhombus are the only quadrilaterals whose diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Square and the rhombus are the only quadrilaterals whose diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. But uh, the difference is that square, diagonals of a square are equal, but diagonals of a rhombus are varied. So uh, it's uh, something that uh, you need to understand that the only quadrilaterals whose diagonals bisect at 90 degrees is square and a rhombus. Uh, okay, so I want to draw. I want to draw this again for you, uh, so that uh, you can be able to confirm all those properties. So we are going to construct. We are going to construct a parallelogram. We are going to construct a, a parallelogram. Okay, so uh, parallelogram. So you can draw or construct parallelogram, uh, maybe A, B, C, D, such that uh, line A, B, say three centimeters, uh, line B, C, I can maybe give it five centimeters, and then angle A, B, C. Angle ABC is 70 degrees. 70 degrees. So you start by drawing a straight line. Start by drawing a straight line. Start by drawing a straight line. So you draw a straight line. Mm -hmm. Then after that, so that you measure line, you measure line AB, or you can measure line BC, five centimeters. So line BC is five centimeters. Use a compass to measure five centimeters. BC is five centimeters. So you stand at this point, draw an arc, then come back here, and I draw another arc. Okay, then after that, you name it. Uh, this, is, uh, this is line AB. 
Uh, so we are done with this. So already this is BC, should be BC. And then we are told that uh, we are told that uh, line AB is three centimeters, BC is three centimeters. Uh, sorry, uh, AB is three centimeters. Now first I want us to measure the angle, angle ABC, which is uh, I mean angle ABC, which is seventy degrees. So standard B, standard B, standard B. Then measure 70 degrees. So again, the line is on this side. The line is on this side. And this is the angle that we want. So we check the zero from this side is in which scale, inner or outer. So this is inner scale. So you measure 70 centimeters, uh, which is there. Uh, after that, then you come back and measure 3 centimeters, 3 centimeters BC. Uh, sorry, AB, three centimeters. So measure three, measure three centimeters. Standard B, then draw that arc above the dot, like I've indicated there. Then after that, you join. After that, you join line AB, uh, considering where the dot is and where the arc is. So you join it. Uh, you join it. Sorry, let me just take another like a pen. So you join AB. Okay. So this is A, and this angle here is 70 degrees. Uh, now, uh, just like when you are constructing the rhombus, we said, uh, most of the time the question is always like this, and then you're asked to complete it. So you can just complete this, uh, taking, it, taking into consideration the sides. So this was three centimeters. We know that uh, one of the property of uh, a parallelogram is that opposite sides are equal. So if AB is three, then it means also uh, CD is three. So you measure three, and then you draw the arc like that. Then, because line AB, I mean line BC, is five, line BC is five, then it, uh, also line AD is going to be five, reason two, I mean the opposite sides are equal and parallel. So just do that arc like that, so that they intersect, like the way they have intersected. So where they, they have intersected is D, it's D. Then now you can join, you can join, um, uh, point AD or line AD as a so you can join it like that then also join line DC like that uh, so after joining then we can start discussing about the properties we said opposite you can see there are four sides so this uh, line and this line, that is line AD and line BC are parallel. Line AB and line DC are also parallel. Uh, the other thing we said is that opposite angles are equal. So if this is angle ABC is 70, then it means also angle CDA is also going to be 70 degrees. Then angle, uh, uh, this, this angle and this angle, that is angle BAD, and angle A, D, C, that is this one and this one, they are adjacent. Adjacent angles add up to 180 degrees. So when you take 180 minus 70, you'll get 110 degrees. Now if, if uh, angle B, A, D is 110 degrees, then it also means that angle B, C, D is also 110 degrees. That because the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. And then we also say that diagonals, diagonals are varied. That means that the diagonals are not equal, and they do not bisect at 90 degrees. The only quadrilaterals whose diagonals bisect at 90 degrees include square and a rhombus. Square and a rhombus. So uh, that one, like that. 
So we have so this diagonal, that's diagonal AC and diagonal BD, they are not equal. It's very evident. Now, this diagonal, that is diagonal BD, is longer than diagonal AC. Now, we said that those diagonals, uh, they, bis they uh, don't bisect at 90 degrees. So you can see, you can see the line 90 degrees is here and the line 90 degrees is here, but the line is here. So it's automatically that it's not 90 degrees. So this one is not 90 degrees. And then uh, we move to the next, uh, the next uh, quadrilateral. That is, that is rectangle. That is rectangle. So let me use this part here. Rectangle. Now rectangle, just like uh, the other quadrilaterals, has four sides, has four sides. Rectangle has four sides. So number one has four sides, has four sides. Number two, uh, opposite, opposite, angles, uh, sorry, opposite sides, opposite sides are equal. Each interior angle, each interior angle, each interior angle uh, is, right, is 90 degrees. Uh, number four, diagonals are equal, diagonals are equal but do not bisect but do not bisect at 90 degrees they are equal but they do not bisect at 90 degrees uh, has two has two pairs of parallel lines has two pair of parallel lines has two pairs of parallel lines uh, Diagonals are equal but not bisect. Each interior angle is 90. So these are some of the characteristics of a rectangle. Uh, drawing a rectangle is just like, uh, follow the same procedure, just like uh, a square. Then we have trapezium. Trapezium. Now, trapezium is the only quadrilateral that has one pair, has one pair of parallel line one pair of parallel line, one pair of parallel line. So this trapezium is the only uh, quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel lines. The other four that I've just discussed, um, the other four that I've just discussed have um, two pairs of parallel line. So this is a unique, unique property of uh, a trapezium. This is a unique, unique property of a trapezium. Many a times you can be asked this question, so make sure that you don't miss it. This is the only uh, quadrilaterals, I mean quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel line, as you have seen on the slide. Um, uh, it doesn't have so many properties, unlike uh, the four that I have discussed previously. Now, you can have two Maybe I'll sketch here uh, before I draw it for you. Uh, now, this one and this one, if this one and this one are equal, then this trapezium is called, this trapezium is called isosceles trapezium. And then we also have the other one, I, I want to draw this. Then we have uh, this one here. Now this one here is called a right angle trapezium because this, uh, this angle here is 90 degrees. As you can see, only these lines are parallel. And this line and this line makes what we call a pair. That is one pair. Again, this one and this ones, they are not parallel. If you extend, I said that parallel lines are lines that cannot meet. So if you extend these lines, they'll meet 
at a certain point and that's uh, that disqualify it uh, as having two uh, pair, uh, pairs of parallel lines. So if you only have one pair here, as you can see. So I want to construct a trapezium for you. I want to construct one trapezium here for you uh, so that uh, you can be able to understand how easy it is to construct it. So I'll use this side. Okay. All right. So I want us to construct trapezium, trapezium A, B, C, D, trapezium A, B, C, D, trapezium A, B, C, D, such that A, B, that is line A, B, such that line A, B is five centimeters, five centimeters. Uh, angle ABC, angle ABC is equal to angle, angle ABC is equal to angle BAD, BAD which is equal to 60 degrees. And then we also have line AD, line AD is equal to, line AD is equal to line BC is equal to 4 centimeters. Line AD is equal to line BC is equal to 4 centimeters. Now, and then uh, after that, we can be able to answer a few questions there. So what we are supposed to do, learners, is that uh, we draw a straight line. We draw a straight line. So we'll start with line AB. Start with line AB. So put your ruler like that. Draw a very straight line, like I've just drawn. And then uh, after drawing line AB, I mean a uh, straight line like that, then we measure, we measure uh, five centimeters. We measure five centimeters. So can we do a compass? Measure five centimeters. Five centimeters. Five centimeters is there. Mm -hmm. So stand at any point on the line, then draw an arc like that. Come back again here. Uh -huh. Make sure that you are very accurate. Construction needs a lot of accuracy. And don't shake, don't shake. So that is line uh, AB. So Indicate, it is important to indicate as you proceed with your construction. Uh, then after that, after that, um, uh, we also, we are told that line AD and line BC is four centimeters. Now the first thing that I want us to do is to f uh, measure the angles, angles. So use, take your protractor, take your protractor, Take your protractor. Uh, angle ABC, so we are looking at, we'll stand at, at B, at point D, and at the same time, we'll also stand at point A. Now, angle ABC and angle BAD are equal, and they measure 60 degrees. So stand at A, stand at A, stand at A, like I've indicated. Then, because the line is this side, so you use you have to find the angle on this side. Now, we say that you have to check the scale that you're supposed to use. So the zero from this side uh, is fi found in, on the inner scale. So we start, and then we measure 60. So six is there, put a dot. After putting the dot, then you come and also uh, measure the line. We are also told that Line AD, line AD, line AD is equal to BC is equal to four centimeters. So measure four centimeters, measure four centimeters. After measuring four centimeters, stand at A and then draw an arc above the dot. The dot will guide you on where to draw the arc. So draw the arc above the dot, like that. 
Um, then, uh, okay, so uh, this side also, we draw the arc above the dot. Oh, so let's, let me just uh, join this first. So let's join this part here. So this is 60 degrees. And then also, we also measure 60 degrees from B. So 60 degrees. So this time round, we are using the outer scale. So it's reaching at this point. So put the dot. So putting the dot, then you also measure four centimeters. Uh, standard B, draw the arc above the dot. After that, then you join the line. So you join the line, having in mind where the dot is, because the dot will guide you. So that. Then after that, uh, this is uh, D, where the arc is, is D. And uh, the other one should be C. So this is. D and this is C. Now for that you, you join line DC. So join line DC. Like I've joined it. So uh, this is a trapezium, isosceles one, since this one and this one uh, are equal. Uh, you can also drop perpendicular can also drop perpendicular. Uh, that's the next thing that, uh, if time will allow me, I'll take you through uh, so that uh, you can be able to understand how a uh, perpendicular line can be dropped. So if you look at this line here and this line here, they are parallel to one another. Uh, that means that it, this is the only pair of parallel line that we have. That's the only pair of parallel line that we have. So that is basically how you can be able to draw an isosceles trapezium, an isosceles trapezium, because this is four centimeters. Sorry, this is uh, four centimeters, yes. And this is also four centimeters. This line is five centimeters. So sometimes you can just drop that uh, uh, so that this can be 90 degrees. Uh, so that is how you should be able to drop a perpendicular, perpendicular line. Now, uh, I want to take you through. I want to take you through another, uh, another. I mean, I want to take you through how we can be able to construct uh, to drop a perpendicular line from a point. How to drop a perpendicular line from a point? So let me use this side, how to drop a perpendicular line from a, a point. So this is another area that uh, you need to understand so that uh, you can be able to answer the questions correctly. Now, I just want to start with uh, uh, any triangle or any rhombus or any parallelogram. So let me draw parallelogram here. So you can have a parallelogram. Uh, let's say this is parallelogram AB. AB, so draw the arcs, the lines, and all the points. So this is, let's say, parallelogram ABCD. So AB is four centimeters, four centimeters. So this is AB, uh, four centimeters. So you can name it AB, four centimeters. Now this is dropping, 
perpendicular dropping perpendicular by sector from a point dropping perpendicular by sector from a point so uh, line a b is four centimeters and then uh, uh, maybe the angle is 50 the angle is 50 degrees angle a b c is 50 so you stand at that point this is the side that you want so um, you measure 50 degrees or 60 whichever you want uh, line a b line a b is four centimeters and then angle a b c is 50 degrees and then line b uh, b c is five centimeters it's five centimeters so we can use that information so uh, the angle is there already and line b c is five centimeters so you measure five centimeters again five centimeters uh -huh. so five centimeters is there so okay this one will go this side so i need to extend this line this will go on the on the other side don't we disturb us so very fast and draw the line again so you do that then uh, AB is four centimeters. So you measure four centimeters. Four centimeters is there. Four centimeters. Okay. Then the angle is 50 degrees. The angle is 50 degrees. That is angle ABC. ABC. It should be a b so this is 50 so you put the put your compass there measure 50 put the dot and then uh, you measure five centimeters you measure five centimeters so i'll put the ruler here the compass here and measure five centimeters there so I put it above the dot. So this is five. Remember, this line BC and line AD are parallel. So you can also put the arc there. That is five, five. Then after that, then we are told that uh, we can join this line first. That is line B, BC, BC. So take into consideration where the dot is, because that is the angle. Okay. So you join it like that. So this is C. And then uh, after that, then you can complete the, the figure. Since this is 4, this is 4, this is how to complete it. Since from here to here is 4, it means also from here to here, it's also going to be four. So where they, they intersect at is your point D. Now you can join, you can join, you can join point AD, you can join point AD, you can join point AD, like that. And then you can also join point D, C. Now, uh, you can indicate this was 50 degrees, and then this is going to be 130 degrees. Of course, this one is also 130 degrees, and this is 50 degrees. Now, most of the questions that are always said is that you can be asked, join diagonal DB and also diagonal AC, and then find a half the longer diagonal find half the longer diagonal so if you're asked to find half the longer diagonal then you're supposed to measure the diagonal itself 
uh, in this case, this one is the longer one, DB. After measuring DB, then you divide by two. Uh, if you are told to find the length of half the shorter diagonal, then again, you will have to measure this and then you divide by two. So you need to be very careful uh, so that you can be able to understand the examiner's question. Sometimes learners fail because of rushing. It is important you understand the question uh, so that you can be able to get the correct answer. So after you, you have measured DB, because that is the longer diagonal, then you read the question, because you will find that the measurement of line DB, and the question probably is asking after the diagonal. So that means that after finding line DB, you're supposed to divide by two in order to, uh, to get your answer. Now, dropping perpendicular by sector from a point. Now, let's say you want to, uh, the question was, drop a perpendicular from point C to meet line AB at uh, D O T. Drop perpendicular from C to meet line AB at C uh, or at O. Drop, drop perpendicular from C. So the keyword is from C. So how do you drop a perpendicular line or a perpendicular bisector? You would stand at point C, after standing at point C, then find appropriate radius. This is where the line is supposed to cut, line AB. So you stand at point D, because you have been told to drop it from, uh, sorry, from point C. You are told to drop it from point C. So stand at point C, and then make sure that you draw an arc that cuts line AB. So draw, draw an arc that cuts line AB. Uh, so draw an arc that cuts line AB, like that. Uh, the question is, draw perpendicular from C to, uh, to meet line AB at O. Now, after drawing an arc, I've just stood here, drawn an arc that uh, cuts line AB on both sides, that is on two sides, there and here. After doing that, then you lift your compass, reduce it, stand at where you have uh, the first arc on the, on the other side of the line, then draw an arc above it, come back to, don't interfere with the compass, come back to where you have also the other arc cutting the line, also uh, draw an arc. After doing that, then you, you join, you join this perpendicular bisector from point C, from point C to where the two arcs intersect at. So you do, you do what I'm just doing. So you are told to drop a perpendicular from point C to cut line AB at O, at O. So now the, where, where the, the perpendicular bisector is cutting line AB is where you write O. Don't write O where you have the two uh, arcs intersecting at. So this is point O. Then from here, you can also be told bisect. This is how you are supposed to draw perpendicular. So you can also be told to bisect angle ADC to meet the, the perpendicular bisector at P. So how do you bisect? How do you bisect the angle? To bisect an angle means to divide into two equal parts. So you stand at D, after standing at D, then you draw an arc like that to cut the, the line that is forming the angle. Because angle D is formed by line AD and line DC. Now after drawing the arc that cuts both the line AD and line uh, DC, uh, then come to where the first arc is, then draw the arc here, come back here, draw the arc also here. I'm saying you can be told after dropping the perpendicular bisector, you can also be told to bisect angle ADC such that the angle bisector meet the perpendicular bisector at P. So after doing uh, what I've just done on the, the whiteboard, then you join the line, you join the line. So that is bisecting that. So you join this line here, uh, like I'm just joining it, like that. So where, where this is angle bisector. Angle bisector bisect an angle, and this one is a perpendicular bisector. So where this angle bisector meets uh, line CO is probably P. Then now from here you can be told measure can be told to measure, measure line, 
line, uh, measure line D, P. You can also be told to measure uh, this angle here. That is angle, measure angle, um, D, P, D, P, O, D, P, O. So many questions can be asked from this point. So learners, it is important you know how to bisect an angle, how to drop perpendicular bisector. Now, uh, as I wind up, I want to take you through some of the questions, uh, KCP questions, that have always been uh, tested. I always look at the last 10 years. So uh, this, is, uh, this is on the, maybe you can show them on the slide. Uh, so in, in 2019, that is last year. In 2019, uh, the question uh, was in number 28. And there you are told to construct a parallelogram, uh, whereby after constructing the parallelogram, you are asked to find half the longer diagonal. Uh, I hope that is a question that uh, you can handle at home. Now, in, 20, in 2018, in 2018 um, it was number nine. And this was also about about um, properties of quadrilateral. Uh, the two quadrilaterals that I mentioned earlier, uh, I said there are only two quadrilaterals. I mean, there are two pro only two properties of quadrilateral that are shared by the four uh, quadrilateral. That is uh, having four sides and also uh, the total angle of interior angle add up to 360. Then in 2017, in 2017, uh, it was number 15, uh, whereby you are expected to draw a parallelogram after drawing a parallelogram, then you are asked to find half the diagonal, half the diagonal. You are expected to do a parallelogram, and then you find half the diagonal. And then in 2016, it was on number 25. Uh, this was also about parallelogram. You are just asked to find half the diagonal. And then uh, in 2015, it was on uh, in question number 15. Now here, you are expected to draw a parallelogram. After drawing the parallelogram, you are expected to to find the shorter diagonal. And then in 2014, there were two questions. Uh, that is number 17 and number 30, whereby you expected, in number 17, you expected to give the property of a rhombus. And uh, those, those are the same properties that I've just discussed. And in number 30, that is again in 2014, you expected to uh, draw a rhombus. After drawing the rhombus, then you find the difference in length of diagonal you find the difference in length of the diagonal. That means that after you had drawn it, after you had drawn the, after you, after you had drawn the, the rhombus, you were to measure the, the two uh, diagonals. After measuring the two diagonals, then you find their difference. Difference in mathematics means that you're supposed to, you're supposed to find uh, the, I mean, you're supposed to minus. And then in 2013, uh, it was uh, number 12, now this one you are expected to drop a perpendicular, just like I've dropped perpendicular from the last uh, example that I've given you, and then you uh, you work out the question. Then in, uh, in 2011, uh, there was no question in 2012. In 2011, it was number 32, and number 32 you expected to draw a parallelogram. After drawing the parallelogram, then you find half the diagonal. Then lastly in 2010, the question was on number 19, in number 19, whereby you expected to, to draw, I mean, to give the property of a rhombus and a square. Property of a rhombus and a square. Uh, now, I think now I've uh, been able to, uh, to do most of the questions. Uh, maybe I'll just try to uh, answer a certain question here. Somebody's asking. Uh, now, remember I said that a rhombus, a rhombus, uh, rhombus, parallelogram, I mean rhombus, rectangle, rhombus, rectangle, and a square are special, are special parallelograms. But the vice versa or the other way around is not true. You cannot say parallelogram is a rhombus. You cannot say parallelogram is a square. You cannot say rectangle, I mean parallelogram is a rectangle. But it is true when you say Rhombus is a parallelogram, special parallelogram. Square is a special parallelogram. Rectangle is a special parallelogram. Uh, let me 
But I think now you are you are good to go. Okay, so uh, I think that is the only question that I can see here as of now. So learners, um, I hope you have gotten help, and now moving forward, you'll be able to construct uh, quadrilaterals without experiencing any difficulty or without encountering any difficulty. At the same time, I believe that by now you know all the properties of quadrilaterals, uh, whether it is a square, whether it's a rectangle, whether it's a trapezium. Uh, then uh, you know this is uh, an area that is mostly tested in, uh, on, in the national exam, that is KCP. So it will be very important if you can, you know, go through uh, several questions, and then especially the ones that uh, I gave you the summary, the KCP ones, so that you can be able to uh, understand them better. Uh, for now, uh, if maybe you had a question, the numbers are always scrolling on the screen, so you can just get in touch with us, uh, so that next time, if uh, Next time, if uh, we, we, I will come back, I'll be able to handle them. For now, I uh, wish to thank you all for watching and uh, keep it locked on KU TV. This is where learning is made easier for you uh, while you're at home. May God bless you all and make sure that you stay safe. Bye-bye.